Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So in today's video, I actually have a video request. So what I've got uh, what I've got on my phone here is the comment. So what I'm going to do is just read this comment out. I might even plug it somewhere on the screen as well. So this uh, comment is by Dan J and he says, Hi Ads, I would really appre appreciate it if you could do a video for what you look out for when you go to car boots. I find it really difficult to find things. Have you got any tips for me like certain categories or items do you have a certain niche so what I thought I would do is kind of compile a video based on that um, and what I've done is researched various different niches various different kind of items in different niches um, and I've pulled out some sales now these are not my sales uh, these are just random sales from the eBay completed and sold searches that I've run um, and they're pretty general items a lot of people may be aware of these already but there might be a couple that you're not aware of even if you've been doing this for a few months um, but yeah generally if you've been doing it for as long as you may you'll probably be aware of pretty much all these items but you may want to stick around just to, to watch and see if you pick up any knowledge anyway you might find that on some of the items certain items in the titles have got different keywords that you have haven't actually thought of before so it's always uh, an idea just to stick around and maybe see if you pick up anything uh, in that regard so without further ado we will get on with this and I hope that some of the newer resellers out there find this useful and if you do also if you do if this is a video that you um, do find useful that you do got to get a lot of knowledge from and that you en do enjoy to see please be sure to leave a like down below because that will let me know whether my audience wants to see these these videos or whether they don't want to see these videos so if you as an audience member uh, really enjoy this video be sure to leave a like don't leave a like yet though because you haven't seen it so but be sure in a minute or two once we've got into the video uh, leave a like on it and that'll indicate to me whether I should do more of these videos or not so with that being said we'll get on with this uh, video here and on this first item so this is just a Sony Walkman now be aware that obviously with a lot of these items I'm going to show you uh, there is going to be different different variations that are going to be different prices and all the rest of it so this one is I would say fairly middle of the road Walkman or fairly basic one it's not necessarily one of the really sought after models obviously some of the models can go for really amazing money like I've put I think I've seen ones of these go for about a hundred pound or something like that so um, you know it depends on the model but this model here you can tell by the model number up here and it will have been on the unit itself as well um, WM dash FX 288 portable cassette tape player radio now I don't really see many people well, to be honest I don't watch that many reseller videos anymore but um, uh, from what I know, I don't think like loads of people necessarily talk about these as much as they used to. There seemed to be a phase about a year ago where a lot of people were talking about these, a lot of people were picking them up, but I think it's kind of died down again now and maybe less people have talked about them as much, so maybe the newer resellers might not, not know as much about sort of electronics and stuff, unless, as I say, I, I don't watch tons of reseller videos anymore, so there might be a few people who are talking about these. Um, but yeah, 29 95 someone got for this one generally a lot of these are going to go between like 20 and 40 pounds um so if you pay you know if you're paying a pound or two at boot sale you will find these at boot sales if you get there early you will find them maybe not every week but certainly once or twice a month if you go to you know a boot sale each week you're going to be able to find these fairly regularly and if you can pay you know one two three pound for them no matter what the model is you're going to make some money on them so even if it's like the worst model uh, you're going to make something on them because I'm pretty sure even like the worst model will, will go for it still go for about 10 15 pounds so yeah that's that one there anyway so something to be looking out for next we've got this Monty Python almost everything box set now this is actually a current listing but uh, I did find it on the sold listings as well because 109 of them have sold um but basically what I'm meaning by this one is just any DVD box sets that you see. Now, don't be um, fooled. Obviously, not all DVD box sets are going to be great money or anything. And always make for sure that you are checking eBay complete and sold if you're unsure. Or if you don't have access to an internet connection at the time and can't check eBay complete and sold, then obviously uh, what you might want to do is just try and negotiate the, the price down to as low as possible or just simply not buy the item to avoid losing you know, any significant amount 
amount of money or whatever. Um, but yeah, you know, if you're picking up sealed DVD box sets like this Monty Python one or something like this bigger My Family one. So usually what I go off is if it's a fairly, if it's been a fairly popular TV show and it's a fairly chunky box set, either it's like a DVD style box set or like a full on box set, you know, like a big box box set. Um, if it's like a fairly chunky size and it's been of a fairly popular TV show, you're going to make some money on it. That's kind of the way I look at it. Now, obviously, that is going to be dependent on how much you pay for it, but if you're paying something like two or three pounds for something like that, then you're going to make money. I find it very... Um, hard to see that you would lose on that. Now, of course, there are going to be exceptions. There are going to be ones that don't necessarily fit that rule. And just because it's a popular TV show and it's a fairly big box set doesn't automatically guarantee it's going to be worth money. But in my experience, a lot of those items, as I've described there, um, will be worth money. A lot of those box sets will be worth money. Now, I am talking about new and sealed box sets here. I don't know whether I mentioned. Obviously, there are certain niche ones that will go for really, really good money even if they are used. Um, but generally, if you're new to reselling, maybe just keep to that new and sealed DVD box sets because the DVD market is very hit or miss. It's um, a lot of DVDs don't do as well anymore. Um, generally, like single DVDs just aren't worth picking up unless they are a niche DVD. So there's certain like niche horror DVDs that do well. Um, I know that like in the VHS realm, certain like pre-certificate pre-certificate VHSs do well. It's all this is all going to be about a learning curve if you are new to this, and it is literally going to be trial and error and looking on complete and solds and seeing which items go well. But these are just two examples here. So we've got in my family box set went for thirty two ninety nine and again this has got a multiple multiple quantity listing. Um and then this one went for seventeen ninety eight. Again both brand new and sealed even used, I would imagine this My Family one is worth picking up used if you can get it for a couple of quid. Um, but yeah, so that's just two examples there. But you just think of any DVD box, any any TV show you want. Like, you know, you might be a fan of Frasier, let's say, from the 90s. So just type that into eBay, Frasier DVD box. Or you might be a fan of Friends, you know, so you type that into eBay. Or you might be a fan of Mork and Mindy or, or you know, what it doesn't matter what it is. Only Fools and Horses or Steptoe and Son or, you know, whatever it is. It doesn't matter what it is. Just get, find a, uh, maybe even just do that for a bit of research first off. Find a, uh, a TV show you like, right, just you generally like. Type it into eBay, click on the complete and sold icon um, at the bottom left hand corner in the search results and then um, just see if it's worth money and just build up a little bit of a, an experience or experience level with doing that and then you will get to know kind of which ones go for money, which ones don't go for money after a while of doing some research and also getting out in the field and trying to find these from car boots and charity shops. But yeah, that's those there anyway. Uh, next, I thought I'd pick out a die cast or a couple of die casts. So die cast like, you know, just um, metal, you know, like little metal cars and stuff like that. Uh, Corgi, Dinky, uh, or oh, what's some other ones? Um, oh, what's some other ones? Oh, what's the really well-known one that I forgot? Britons, that's it, Britons. Uh, I like I like getting Britons uh, die cast and stuff. Uh, they mainly do more like, um, do they do more, more like tractors and stuff? But no, I think they do um, cars and stuff as well. But yeah, so... You know, any die cast things like that. Um, if these big hauler type things, you know, these car carriers, these always seem to do okay. Like, you know, if you pick a Corgi one of these up for a pound, as long as it's not a plastic one and it's like really modern, as long as it's, you know, a vintage die cast one and you can see it's got a bit of play wear to it so you know there's some age to it. Um, if you pick it up for a pound or so, you can't really go wrong. A lot of these are going to be half decent money. Even if you only get six ninety nine, seven ninety nine plus postage is a minimum. It's still good for a beginner, but, you know, a new reseller, that's good. There's some good money in it, and it just helps you learn the game as well. So, yeah, these uh, die cast are good. I'll show you another little job lot here. So this is just a job lot of, you know, a few more play-worn uh, play items here. So basically with die cast, what you want to find in the ideal world is... A vintage die cast piece, you know, preferably dinky. Dinky is a good one to look out for. Um, that is in pristine condition 
inside the box but there isn't anything like a reproduction or anything it's a vintage you know it's a vintage piece um but that is like the ideal because if you get one of them and it turns out to be like a, a sought after model as well you could be looking a lot of money like a serious amount of money um so that's what you really want to look for you want to look for you know really good quality ones that are not play worn or anything like that however the play worn ones still go for decent money as you can see here there's there's four of these little ones here very very play worn as you can see 14 quid plus postage these are corgi uh, ones again and you can still get money for them so if you see a box of of die cast toys you know die cast uh, cars and you maybe pick for a few of them and you turn them upside down and they say corgi and they say dinky and stuff it might be worth you know handing over a five or a tenner for the box if that's what they're, they're asking or whatever and just taking them home with searching individually and see if any are, are worth money now of course again i want to stress the fact that you do want to try and uh, you know check completing solds to limit your risk a little bit especially if you're paying 10 pound for something or something like that or maybe even more uh, especially when you are new to this because when you're new you're prone to make mistakes but certainly you know these things are again all these things are going to be readily available for car boots we might not be there every week uh, and you might have to get there quite early uh, to be able to actually pick some of this stuff up but they are going to be there fairly regularly so you should be able to find things like this you know and again like these box sets and stuff um, so next we've got this job lot of uh, lady, vintage ladybird books we can see here there's eight books here and uh, they got 20 pounds for these now i only picked out these ladybird books but generally any children's books i don't know i think these are children's books aren't they yeah uh, most of them seem like they are anyway so um you know like loads of different children's books go for half decent money really you do want to be getting children's books for like 10 pence a piece so what you know like if you if you're getting like the rainbow magic books or you're getting uh what else are the children there's, there's absolutely loads there's like so many to mention like the beast quest books or um the series of unfortunate events series of unfortunate events and like harry potter you, you're all right to pay a little bit more for them because they do go for a little bit more um but generally like the you know the thinner children's books that generally have a large amount of books in one series um, then generally you only want to be paying like 10 maybe 20p maximum um, on those from a car boot and just you know accumulating a large bundle and then maybe you've got a bundle of 20 or 30 of them and then you, you might be able to get I don't know, 15 to 20 quid, depending on the books. Um, but yeah, a lot of children's books are worth money. Not all of them, again, but a lot of them are. So, you know, again, just check complete and sold. Think of children's books that you had when you were younger. Or, you know, you know, maybe you had Famous Five books or something like that. Think of those and then type them into complete and sold. See if any bundles have sold for good money. Or maybe you had, like, uh, some other Enid Blyton books when you were younger. It, it, I don't know. I'm just literally guessing. But... Any books that you had that, you, that were younger, when you were younger, that were were belonging to a series, that you know you might be worth uh, typing them in and having a look at completing solds, and they're probably going to be ready readily available at car boots as well because they were probably mass produced at the time anyway. So yeah, that's those. So children's books are good. So these are just a pair of uh, candlesticks here. So brass candlesticks. Um, I wanted to include these because generally, and, and it, again, it's not just brass. I could go off, I could literally make this video 10 hours long because there's that much stuff to cover. Um, but, you know, any sort of brass items, you know, if they're, if they've got a decent weight to them, if they're a decent quality, um, and you're only paying, you know, 50p a pound or whatever it is, you're going to make some money on them. You know, like I'm talking like little brass animal figures and stuff like that. As long as they've got a bit of weight to them and maybe they've got a little bit of size to them as well. If you're paying 50p or a quid or something like that, you're going to make something on them. Uh, now, these like uh, candlesticks here, these are a little bit different from a norm. I think they put like sunbeam or some, some Sunburst in the title, so Sunburst design, uh, and these went for 11.99 plus postage. Now brass candlesticks, some of them you might only get like 10 pound plus postage. Others you might get like 15 pound, and then they go up from there. Really, there's a pair. I think it's called the King of Diamonds candlesticks. I think I've actually got some on at the moment, uh, and they go for really good money. I think one of them recently sold for like 60, 70 quid. Uh, I think it's King of Diamonds anyway. That the, the entire they're entitled. Um, so yeah, brass candlesticks. They can 
can range in price but generally again if you're paying a couple of pound a pair you're going to make some money on them um, if you get like a larger pair of them as I say like something like the King of Diamonds you can actually pay a little bit more for them you could maybe pay a fiver or something like that and uh, more more than likely they're going to be worth paying up and uh, they're going to be worth some good money opposed to the more standard brass candlesticks so yeah I just wanted to mention that and again as I mentioned maybe research the, the uh, brass figures and maybe like little brass men figures and stuff you know all these different items in brass uh, and even copper as well um, but if I do any more of these videos if it is something you'd like to see actually we're about halfway through the video or just over halfway through the video if you are enjoying this video if you are getting value out of it please do give it a like to indicate if you'd like to see one of these in the future um, because you know if we if I do get enough interest in this and I do one in the future then obviously I can spend more time padding out some of these niches and talking a little bit more about them um, but you know obviously there's so much to cover there's so many items that you can sell uh, you know I can't possibly try and cover everything in one video but yeah um, so that's those there next we've got a plush toy so Disney plush toys they're always worth looking out for especially you know if they've got a little stamp on them I don't know whether this guy has got a little stamp on him I'm guessing he has don't know whether it's on here in one of the photos. No, I can't see where the stamp is, but I'm guessing there is a stamp on it. Maybe there isn't, but generally there's a little, like, um, Disney stamp of authenticity, and it says, like, Disney Store or something like that. It's a little round stamp that's stuck, sewn on to the actual plush. Um... And generally, if it's got that on there, if you're paying a pound or two, it doesn't even matter if it's a really popular, like a really popular, really common character like Mickey. Uh, you know, mainly with uh, these Disney plushies, the more like obscure characters go for more money. Uh, the more common ones don't go for as much money. Um, but even if you've got that Disney stamp on there and it is a common item, you know, a really common plush, if you're paying a pound or two, you're not going to lose out. You're going to make some money on it. Um, so this is just a um, authentic Disney Store Monsters Inc. Sully plush. Uh, we got $14.99 for this one. It's quite a large one, actually. It's 17 inch here. So it is quite a big one, actually, that one. Um, but yeah, $14.99 on that fast and free postage. Um, so yeah, that's that one there anyway. And then this is an example of maybe a little bit more of a sought after, a rarer one. Now, this one here, or maybe a smaller version of this one here, you'll probably find at the car boots, you know, fairly regularly. Maybe not this exact character, but you might find. Monsters Inc. plushies, you know, various different Monsters Inc. plushies in general at the car, but like, there might be a Mike one there one week, and then, you know, another week there might be a Sully, or there might be something else from another Disney Disney show that's there, and you'll find that some of these are more common, once you've been going to more car boots and more car boots, you'll find that some of them are more common and worth less, and you don't see, you see them quite regularly, and then there's these ones here that you hardly ever see at car boots, or you see them every now and then, maybe once a season or something like that um, and you know this is a Disney Store Parks Lion King Mufasa plush this is a rarer plush obviously someone's got 40 quid for this you're probably going to be end up paying a little bit more at a car boot for this one you never know someone might not know what they have and they'll sell it to you for a pound or two but generally someone might you know end up charging a fiver for this at the car boot um, but you're more than happy to pay that because obviously you've got a better margin in it but as I say this one you might find a bit less at the car boot or quite a lot less than maybe the more common ones like this again like mickey and minnie and 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 is it daffy duck or not daffy duck it's a uh Donald Duck and well, he, he, Donald Duck or well, Daffy Duck's another brand, isn't it? But uh, Donald Duck, things like that that are more common, you're gonna see all the time. But even picking those up, I'd say 50p a quid or something, you're still gonna do well on them. And if you're a new reseller, it's always worth just trying it out and uh, seeing what works for you, and just trying to uh, you know just buying one if you see them for 50p or a pound at a boot sale taking them home, listing them, and seeing whether it's worth your while to, to do that or whether you want to go for a few more higher value items. But yeah, that's that one there. And then finally, just wanted to finish on this Panasonic. This is an MV-SJ206. Uh, this is a VHS player, so a, a video, uh, what is it, a video home, oh, what's that? Video, what's it, what does it stand for? VHS, I forgot. Video home system, isn't it? Um, or VCR as well. So 
Uh, yeah, video cassette player recorder uh, with remote manual. Now, these VHS players, they go all over the place, so you have got to be careful. But, you know, a good brand to look out for is Panasonic. Panasonic is a good brand. Another decent brand is going to be Sony and things like that. Um, and generally, it really depends on the model. It, you know, it depends on a lot of different factors. It depends on whether you've got the manual and the remote with it, because if you've not got a remote with it, I'll tell you now, you probably don't want to pick it up because it's probably going to stick around for quite a while, unless you're getting it for something silly like a pound or something, and you can maybe source the remote at a later date and, and add it with it uh, to make it more saleable. Um, but yeah, something like this, um, you know, again, it's going to depend on the model. As I, I think I just said that, so I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself. Um, but yeah, um, so some models will go for like, you know, I've seen some models of certain VHS just go for like £15, something like that. Um, but then there's other ones that go for really good money. I'm sure there's ones that go up into the hundreds of pounds or maybe go up to £100 at least. Um, so yeah, you know, if you get a good Panasonic one and it's got something like this model number on here or a similar model number, then you're probably be going to be looking about £40. So if someone's charging you know, three or four, maybe £5 for these, because a lot of people at Car Boots don't charge a lot for these uh, video uh, recorders or anything or, or or video players because they think they're obsolete and yes okay uh, the mass populate for the mass population they are obsolete however there are people who still like to use these maybe they collect them maybe it's older people who like to use these and end up buying them because they're used to that sort of system whatever it may be there are there is a market for these people do buy them and because people undervalue them at car boots in terms of the owners of them under undervalue uh, like give them an undervaluation it means that you can pick some of these up for really pretty cheap at the moment so um yeah so that's that one there anyway and again you know there's all different varieties of these um vhs players um also you know dvd players are another thing however dvd players seem to me, in my experience, I've not really sold that many DVD players. I do more VHS than DVD. But um, in my experience, DVD players are a little bit more like, uh, not necessarily hit or miss, but you need to do a bit more research on them, you know, um, opposed to VHS players. Because a lot of VHS players just seem to be worth money. Um, some DVD players, depending on the brand, just, you know, aren't worth money. So, yeah, uh, you just got to be careful with the DVD players. But, yeah, that's today's video. So I will leave it there guys and uh, yeah, hope you enjoyed the video as I mentioned about three times through this video already Please do leave it a like if you did enjoy it um, If you haven't subscribed to the channel and this uh, you know and you enjoy this kind of content then please do so and uh, Yeah, if you've got any comments questions or queries drop them down below and I will see you in the next one So I'll see you very soon guys